Playing with Power MTG is supported by Flipside Gaming. When you use the promo code POWER in all caps, you get 10% off orders $10 or more. It saves you money and helps us out at the same time. Also, if you use our promo code from July 8th through August 16th, you'll automatically get entered into a drawing to win a set of all four of the new Commander 2019 decks. Check out the link in the description below for more information. Finally, consider supporting us on Patreon. You'll get early access to videos and many more perks. Check out the links in the description below and subscribe today. Thanks! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Another round is here, and tonight we have a no partner game for everyone to enjoy. That's right, no player is wielding partners to pilot their decks tonight, so now you get to see what happens when no one is joining hands in the command zone. Let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan, piloting his personal favorite CEDH deck, Goto Bandit Warlord. This deck aims to combo off quickly with the Helm of the Host combo equipped to Goto for infinite attack phases. Ryan's opening hand contains a Voltaic Key, Chrome Mox, Dualcaster Mage, Trinisphere, Mountain, Clark Clan Ironworks, and Boil. Next, we have Garrett, piloting his favorite color pairing of Maldrotha, the Grave Tide. This deck aims to abuse Moldrotha's ability to recur from the graveyard to gain additional advantage while utilizing resource denial for their opponents. Garrett's opening hand contains a Windfall, Mystic Remora, Windswept Heath, Mana Crypt, Strip Mine, and a Pernicious Deed. After that we have Dylan bringing back Brago, King Eternal. Stacks and Blink is the name of the game and this deck aims to break parity by utilizing Brago's Flicker ability. Dylan's opening hand contains a Tundra, Hallowed Fountain, Force of Will, Ristic Study, and Two Planes. Finally, we have Mike piloting Teferi, Temporal Archmage. This deck aims to abuse Teferi's untap ability in conjunction with the Chain Veil to go infinite with a number of combos and synergies. Mike's opening hand contains a Graf Digger's Cage, Swan Song, Mana Drain, Ugin the Spirit Dragon, Mana Crypt, Island, and Inventor's Fair. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Ryan wins the Raw Onion Challenge and gets to start us off. Ryan plays a Mountain for turn. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Dualcaster Mage. Next, he casts a Voltaic Key. He passes. Garrett plays a Windswept Heath. He cracks it for a Tropical Island. He follows up by casting Mana Crypt. After that, he casts Windfall. A turn one Windfall definitely disrupts some plans and everyone discards their hand and draws a new hand of seven. Ryan is the most disappointed because he now must discard the Helm of the Host he drew as his first card for turn. All wrapped up, Garrett passes. Dylan plays a Command Tower for turn. Dylan was not as bummed about the discard because he immediately cast Mystic Remora. Finished up, he passes. Mike plays an Island for turn and passes. Ryan starts off his turn by casting Gamble. He searches up a card into his hand and discards a card at random, which is a Thought Vessel. Next, he plays a Mountain for turn. After that, he casts Mox Diamond, discarding a Mountain. He casts a Soul Ring. He follows up with a Mind Stone. Finally, he casts what he tutored up with Gamble, which is a Goblin Welder. With nothing else, he gives the turn to Garrett. Garrett plays a Forest for turn. He casts a Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main phase and adds one green through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts Zer's Weirding. This might be a good time to pause really quickly and read exactly what Xur's Weirding does since it's not seen at many tables and definitely plays a big role in this game. As a quick summary, everyone must play with their hands revealed. Whenever you draw a card, you reveal it. Anyone at the table may pay two life to have you discard that card. Anyway, back to the video. With Xur's Weirding resolved, everyone lays their hand out on the table. Garrett passes to Dylan. Dylan draws a card for turn and reveals an Arid Mesa through Xur's Weirding. He plays an Island for turn. He passes and discards down to 7. Mike draws a card for turn and reveals an Impulse through Xur's Weirding. Garrett pays 2 life to make Mike discard it. Mike looks at the board, looks at his hand, which everyone else can do, and decides to pass the turn. Ryan draws a card for turn and reveals a Mox Opal. Garrett pays 2 life to make Ryan discard it. Ryan sees everyone's hand, so he decides to draw out the counter spells and cast Goto. Everyone debates who and how this card needs to be countered. 
Ryan has a red elemental blast in hand, so now they need to band together to make sure it doesn't resolve. Should it be Mike's Pact of Negation, Mike's Delay, or Dylan's Counterspell? After a ton of debate, Dylan makes the first move and casts Counterspell, targeting Godo. In proper fashion, Ryan casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Counterspell. Mike follows up by casting Delay, targeting Red Elemental Blast. Red Elemental Blast is exiled with three time counters on it, and Ryan's Godo is countered. Next, Ryan activates his Goblin Welder, swapping his Mind Stone for a Trinisphere in his graveyard. All through, Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Garrett loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He reveals an Elvish Mystic through his draw, and Dylan pays two life to discard it. In his main phase, he adds one black through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts his commander, Maldrotha the Gravetide. He plays a Strip Mine from his graveyard and passes the turn. Dylan draws and reveals an Arcane Denial. Ryan pays two life to discard it. Dylan plays an Arid Mesa for turn. He cracks it to fetch up a Plains. He casts Oblivion Ring, exiling Ryan's Goblin Welder. He passes the turn to Mike. Mike draws and reveals Spellseeker. He plays a Tabernacle at Pendril Vale. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and reveals Boiling Seas. Garrett can't pay two life fast enough to have him discard it. With nothing else really to do, he passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Garrett sacks a strip mine to blow up Mike's tabernacle. Garrett draws and reveals a Notion Thief, and Mike pays two life to discard it. In his main phase, he adds two green from his carpet of flowers. He plays an island from his graveyard through Moldrotha. He casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift, bouncing everyone else's non-land permanents back to their hands. Dylan's Oblivion Ring leaves, and Ryan gets his Goblin Welder back. Garrett ships the turn to Dylan. Dylan draws and reveals Spellseeker, and Garrett pays two life to discard it. He plays a Plains for turn. He recasts Oblivion Ring, this time targeting Xur's Weirding. Everyone picks up their hands, breathes a sigh of relief, and Dylan passes the turn. Mike plays an Island for turn. He casts Spellseeker. Spellseeker resolves, and Mike fetches up a Preordain. He passes. On his turn, Ryan recasts his Soul Ring. He falls up with a Voltaic Key. He taps the key in conjunction with Soul Ring to cast Trinisphere again. He passes. Garrett loses his Mana Crypt trigger on his upkeep and takes three damage. In his main phase, he has three black through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts Pernicious Deed. He cracks it for three. In response, Ryan activates his Goblin Welder, targeting Trinisphere and Helm of the Host. Pernicious resolves and everyone's three CMC permanents are destroyed. Dylan's Oblivion Ring is also destroyed and Xur's Weirding re-enters the battlefield. Everyone then reveals their hands. Garrett plays a Windswept Heath from his graveyard. He cracks it for a Bayou. He casts an Arbor Elf. He also casts a Mana Crypt from his graveyard. Wrapped up, he passes to Dylan. Dylan draws and reveals a Mana Drain. He does nothing else on his turn and passes. Mike draws and reveals a Memory Jar. He casts Preordain. He scries two, keeps both on top, and draws and reveals through Xur's Weirding, which is a Mystic Remora. Dylan pays two life to have him discard it. After that, Mike passes. During his upkeep, Ryan's final delay counter is removed from his Red Elemental Blast, and Ryan casts it, targeting Garrett's Moldrotha. Ryan draws and reveals an Ancient Tomb, and Garrett pays two life to discard it. Ryan, with not much else to do, passes the turn. Garrett draws and reveals Null Rot, and Mike pays two life to discard it. In his main phase, he casts Life from the Loam. Dylan responds by casting Swan Song. Garrett responds by casting Mana Drain, targeting Swan Song. Swan Song is countered, and Life from the Loam resolves. Garrett fetches up a Strip Mine and a Windswept Teeth from his graveyard. He plays the Windswept Teeth. He cracks it to fetch up a Forest. Next, he casts Mind Slicer. He passes the turn. Dylan draws and reveals a Basalt Monolith, and Ryan pays two life to discard it. Dylan casts Winter Orb. He passes. Mike draws and reveals a Cyclonic Rift, and Garrett pays two life to discard it. With nothing to do, Mike passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and reveals a Stranglehold. He casts Chrome Mox, exiling Stranglehold under it. He passes. During his upkeep, Garrett loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. During his draw step, he dredges back Life from Malone from his graveyard. He plays a Strip Mine for turn. He uses his Arbor Elf to untap his Tropical Island. He attacks Dylan with his Mind Slicer. In his second main phase, he sacks his Strip Mine to destroy Dylan's Command Tower. He passes the turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Mike casts War of Invention for zero and fetches up a Chrome Mox onto the battlefield, exiling Pact of Negation under it. Dylan draws and reveals a Trinket Mage, and Mike pays two life to discard it. 
With nothing else to do for turn, Dylan passes. Mike draws and reveals a merchant scroll. He looks at the board and passes as well. Ryan draws and reveals a sandstone needle and Garrett pays two life to discard it. He also looks at the board and passes. Garrett draws and reveals a Yavamaya Hollow and Mike pays two life to discard it. He casts a life from the loam, returning Swamp, Yavamaya Hollow, and Strip Mine from his graveyard. He casts a Caustic Caterpillar. He plays a Swamp for turn. He attacks Mike with his Mind Slicer. He passes the turn to Dylan. Dylan draws and reveals a Mystical Tutor and passes. Mike draws and reveals a Pulse of the Grid and Garrett pays two life to discard it. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and reveals a Desperate Ritual. He casts his Desperate Ritual, adding three red to his mana pool. He used that mana to cast Thran Dynamo. He ends his turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Garrett sacks Caustic Caterpillar to destroy Winter Orb. During his draw step, Garrett dredges back Life from the Loam to his hand. In his main phase, he recasts Moltrotha. He recasts Carpet of Flowers from his graveyard. He attacks Mike with his Mind Slicer. In his second main phase, he adds three green through his Carpet of Flowers. He recasts Caustic Caterpillar from his graveyard. He sacks the Caterpillar to destroy his own mana crypt since he is at such a low life total. He plays a Strip Mine and passes the turn. Dylan draws and reveals an Open the Armory. He casts Open the Armory, searching up a Power Artifact. He ships the turn to Mike. Mike draws and reveals an Island, and Garrett pays two life to discard it. In his main phase, Mike casts Merchant Scroll. Garrett responds by sacking his Strip Mine to destroy Mike's untapped Island. Mike taps and floats a blue in response. Mike's Merchant Scroll resolves, and he fetches up a Dig Through Time. He casts Dig Through Time, delving away six cards from his graveyard. With nothing else, he ends his turn. Ryan draws and reveals Burnout, and Mike pays two life to discard it. Ryan then passes the turn. Garrett draws and reveals Flusterstorm, and Mike pays two life to discard it. In his first main phase, Garrett adds two black through his Carpet of Flowers. He plays a Command Beacon from his graveyard. He then casts Dance of Many from the graveyard. He chooses Mind Slicer as the copy since he wants another beater to whittle down life totals. Garrett follows up by casting Null Rod from his graveyard. He then casts Notion Thief from his graveyard. He attacks Mike with both Muldrotha and the Mind Slicer. With nothing else, he passes. Dylan draws and reveals a Scalding Tarn. He plays his Scalding Tarn for turn. He cracks it for an island. He follows up by casting his commander, Brago, King Eternal. He passes to Mike. Mike draws and reveals Into the Royal. He does nothing else and passes. Ryan draws and reveals Heat Shimmer. He also does nothing and passes. During his upkeep, Garrett lets Dance of the Many die, exiling the token. He draws and reveals Lion's Eye Diamond. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He plays a Yavamaya Hollow for turn. He casts Mystic Remora from his graveyard. He casts Caustic Caterpillar. Mike responds by casting Mental Misstep, paying two life. A Mystic Remora trigger goes onto the stack. Mike doesn't pay for the Remora, and Garrett draws a card. He reveals what he drew because of Zur's Weirding, which is a force of will. Ryan pays two life to have him discard it. After that, the Caterpillar is countered. Garrett casts Life from the Loam and returns Strip Mine, Flooded Strand, and Windswept Teeth from his graveyard to his hand. He attacks Mike with Muldrotha and the Mind Slicer. Mike responds by casting Into the Royal, targeting Muldrotha. Mike takes four, and in Garrett's second main phase, he casts Muldrotha again. He passes the turn to Dylan. Dylan draws and reveals Dark Depths, and Garrett pays two life to discard it. He attacks Garrett with his Brago, Brago triggers, and he flickers Brago himself. With nothing else, he passes. Mike draws and reveals a Ponder. He casts Ponder. A Mystic Remora trigger goes onto the stack. Mike doesn't pay, and Garrett replaces his draw to dredge Life from the Loam back to his hand. Mike's Ponder resolves, and he looks at the top three. He decides to shuffle and attempts to draw. This is right around the time that Garrett reminds him of the Notion Thief on the battlefield, and Garrett draws instead. He reveals his draw, which is a high market, and no one pays any life to discard it. Very discouraged, Mike passes the turn. Ryan draws and reveals a mountain. Garrett no longer has the remaining life to be able to discard it, so Ryan draws. He plays his mountain for turn. He casts a Heat Shimmer. A Mystic Remora trigger goes onto the stack, and Garrett reveals a Sylvan Library. Dylan pays two life to discard it. Heat Shimmer resolves, and Ryan puts a copy of Brago onto the battlefield. He attacks Garrett with Brago and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Garrett pays for his Mr. Grimora. He draws and reveals a Swamp. He casts Pernicious Deed from his graveyard. Dylan responds by casting Mana Drain. He casts Caustic Caterpillar from his graveyard. 
He attacks Dylan with Muldrotha, Mind Slicer, and Notion Thief. Dylan blocks a Notion Thief and takes 10. Garrett passes the turn. During his upkeep, Dylan casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a silence onto the top of his library. He draws and reveals his silence. He casts a Cloud Blazer. Cloud Blazer resolves, and Dylan gains two life and draws two cards. He reveals each of his draws through Xur, which is an island and a Panharmonicon. Ryan pays two life to have Dylan discard the Panharmonicon. He attacks Garrett with Brago. Garrett declares no blocks, takes lethal, and Brago triggers, flickering both Cloud Blazer and Brago himself, drawing two cards and gaining two life. He plays a Sensei's Divining Top for turn and passes to Mike. Mike plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He casts a Mana Ball. He cracks his Flooded Strand for an island. He casts his Commander, Teferi, Temporal Archmage. He activates Teferi, untapping four permanents. He casts Memory Jar. He sacrifices his Memory Jar, making everyone set aside their hands and draw a new hand of seven. The hand he drew wasn't what he wanted, so he moves to his end step. Everyone discards their hands and gets back their original ones. He gives the turn to Ryan. During Ryan's upkeep, Dylan casts Silence. Silence resolves and Ryan cannot cast anything on his turn. He draws and passes. On his turn, Dylan casts Archaeomancer. It enters the battlefield and Dylan returns Silence to his hand. He attacks Mike with Brago and Cloudblazer, killing him. Brago triggers and Dylan flickers his attackers again. He passes the turn to Ryan. During Ryan's upkeep, Dylan casts Silence again, preventing Ryan from casting spells. He draws his card and passes the turn. Dylan starts out his turn by attacking Ryan with his creatures. Brago connects and Dylan flickers his creatures. Archaeomancer flickers and Dylan returns Silence again. In his second main phase, Dylan casts Tezzeret the Seeker. Ryan responds by casting Pyroblast, targeting Archaeomancer, trying to stop the lock. Dylan responds by casting Force of Will, targeting Pyroblast. With that, Pyroblast is countered and Tezzeret enters. Dylan then demonstrates his loop of flickering Archaeomancer every turn to return Silence and lock Ryan out of the game until Dylan wins through attacks. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a crazy game. It was very wild to see how much the game truly changes when you can see everyone's hands. Throughout the game, we saw politicking like you've never seen before. Alliances were forged and broken even within phases of the same turn. It was also crazy to see how much more people held back when you could see everyone's hand as well as what did and did not get discarded through Xur's weirding. Congratulations to Dylan on his first win of the series. He stood patiently and waited for the right time to strike. Garrett's Muldrotha deck always had something to do, and most of the table spent their time and resources trying to keep it under control. In the end, it was trying to keep everyone else's mana and answers out of their hands through Xur's weirding that cost him the game. Ryan's Goto deck was foiled from the start with Garrett's turn one windfall, which no one saw coming. He had to spend resources just to recover from that setback. After the counter battle, board wipe, and hand denial, Ryan wasn't equipped to come back. Mike's opening hand was amazing, and it was a huge setback from the turn one windfall. After that, he couldn't find anything he needed to get going like he wanted, and was denied resources too long to make any sort of impact. The player of the game was Garrett. From the very start, Garrett applied pressure to the board and everyone had to spend a lot of resources to try and stop his value engines. The most valuable card was definitely Xur's Weirding. People didn't know what to do with it on the board. The new information presented to you gives you so much more variables to consider when formulating a plan. That about does it for this episode. Tune in next time when we will have four players duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.